Dianthus are resistant to deer, and they can also be considered drought tolerant. Butterflies like it because it's got that flat surface to the actual flower. So we're gonna show you also how to deadhead these carefully, because as you can see, there's a brand new bud coming in right there. And hey everybody, Sean and Allison here from Spoken Garden. Today, it's Plant Chat Friday, and we're gonna talk about Dianthus. Yeah, we've got a beautiful new Dianthus to show you. It's pink, it has beautiful foliage, but before we get into that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on every daily video. Okay, you guys, this is our beautiful pink Dianthus. It's called American Bumbleberry Pie. Who comes up with these names? I know, right? But look at how beautiful this is. I am. I was just immediately struck by the foliage. I know Sean was too, mm. it's just striking. Right? Yep, it's got that kind of grass feel, that grass look to it, which is interesting for a Dianthus. So we wanted to highlight this today. We're gonna to talk about some plant care. We're gonna compare it to another Dianthus that we've previously talked about. And sorry, it's looking a little ratty right now. We, uh, we've we had some slug damage. So first things first, we wanna highlight the different stages of flower growth going on, because it's kind of fun to see the evolution of a flower. So if you come on in here, right here we actually have a bud that's barely developed. Oh yeah, look at that. We have one that's about to pop. Mm -hmm. We have one here that's, now you can see the color, it's starting to fully open. Oh. And then we have fully open, beautiful blooms. Gorgeous. And we have a bunch of dead ones we need to deadhead. Yeah. So we're gonna show you also how to deadhead these carefully, because as you can see, there's a brand new bud coming in right there mm. and we don't wanna harm that, but we wanna remove this. So we'll show you that in just a minute. So to take care of your Dianthus plants, you're gonna need to make sure that they're planted in full sun, well-draining soil, and that they get moderate watering. And that means, you know, every other day or so watering. Not constant watering, not constant moisture around those roots, but you wanna make sure that they're getting enough water to keep them turgid and to keep them uh, looking great. So Dianthus do like to have a balanced fertilizer applied to them every once in a while. They can always use that boost of energy, those boost of nutrients. So they do like that. So keep that in mind too. So right here, you can see we have our new Dianthus, our bumbleberry. And so you can see it's kind of tallish. This plant will get about 11 inches tall and about 11 inches wide at maturity. Now compare it over here, we have a smaller Dianthus. And so this is a really low growing Dianthus compared to the one we're highlighting today. And this can give you a little bit of an idea of the variation of size of plants that Dianthus come in. There are Dianthus plants that get a little bit taller than this one too, so keep that in mind for your needs of your garden and how you want to highlight the Dianthus and the other plants around in your garden when you're selecting plants. Also you can see too, not only is there a difference in height, but the foliage is different. This has more of a traditional type of leaf with a midrib and just a long lance shaped leaf. This Dianthus has midribs on its leaves, but it's more grass-like. It's It doesn't really look like a traditional leaf. And that's pretty cool too. This can add so much different texture to your garden. So this Dianthus in particular is, I, I don't know if we mentioned this yet, but it is a perennial. Actually, so is this one, at least in our climate. And, and zones it, five through nine is where you will see this as a perennial. Otherwise you might need to treat it as an annual. Yeah guys, something to keep in consideration is this plant is actually hardy down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit, if that gives you any indication of how hardy it is. Pretty hardy plant. That's, yeah, that is. And you know, you guys, this is deer resistant. I don't know if you guys knew that, but Dianthus are resistant to deer and they can also be considered drought tolerant. So also, this Dianthus is aromatic. It has a scent to the flower. Ooh, what does it, it smell like? It's really sweet. It's very sweet, very distinct. And uh, also, this plant is very pollinator friendly. It attracts butterflies, it attracts other pollinators. Butterflies like it because it's got that flat surface to the actual flower and they can just land directly on top of it and then get in and get the pollen out. And you know what I think is really cool about Dianthus is they actually bloom almost all year in our climate, but generally spring through fall. So this type of plant blooming into the fall, it will be great for late season pollinators. And a really good use for this Dianthus is along borders and in containers. You can see we've got it in our own container here and got some hardy mums, some garden mums. And on the other side here, we've got a pansy. Wow, we have a lot of deadheading to do. Yeah, we do. So speaking of which, all of this deadheading that needs to happen, we've got some brand new micro snips from Corona Tools that they sent us, and we wanted to use them and show you uh, how to do it on these plants, especially the Dianthus, how to deadhead them. And it's recommended that you do deadhead your Dianthus to get it to continually bloom, and it just helps it look better. We're gonna take our hand snips. These are great little tools. I'm just gonna take this right here. We've got 
before I do that, you can see we've got a dead bloom right here. This one's spent. And then we've got a brand new bud right there for flower that's about to really pop here just below it. So what you want to do is, is grab a hold of the old flower, expose that stem right there. Hope you can see that. Take your snips, put it right underneath it, and cut it so you remove that old flower, but you don't take off, you don't cut that new bud. And so that's deadheading. Just removing the old flowers, exposing the new ones so the plant can continually flower. We'll just go through here. It's always important to get out and here and do this. We've had a couple big storms the last few days and our plants are kind of looking like they need a little bit of a haircut now. Mm -hmm. They look like they need some love. Those mums over by you too. <laughs> we can do that off camera. Oh yeah. Well, Those are a kind couple of, of a mess. Too. Yeah, they've... Go, Sean, go. So let's go over here to these pansies. You guys are getting a triple treat here. Yep, so I'm How did deadhead pansies, mums, and dianthus? So there's no buds all the way down on this stem down to here. So I'm just going to cut that, remove that whole stem of that flower. Definitely out. want that to regrow. That one's this one's on its way out. Yeah. So I'm going to go. I'm going to get this one. You can follow it down over here, right to there. Yep. And you can see these micro snips are really good for just getting in there and just uh, cutting the the stems just in that one particular area. If you're going to use hand pruners to get in and do the same thing for deadheading, it's going to be harder to get the actual cutting end of that pruner in to where these tight areas are to make these finer cuts. These micro snips make it really easy to get right in here by this new bud coming in and where we already removed this old flower bud right here and to make that cut. Isn't that cool? These are great, great tools. Okay, we hope that was helpful. We taught you how to deadhead your dianthus. We taught you about the difference between different types of dianthus and how you can use them in your own garden. We also went over how to care for them and what their needs are to make sure that they thrive in your garden. So go ahead and leave your comments and questions down below for us. We love hearing from you guys. Give us that thumbs up, let us know we're doing a good job, and subscribe to our channel so you get updates on our latest videos. That's a wrap for today's Friday Plant Chat, and we'll be back tomorrow with our next daily video. So have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.